One of the most important parts of working at a theme park is what you wear. <laughs> costumes are a big part of it. So here's a look at how I got my costumes, what they were, how many, and everything involved with them at all three of the parks I worked at. So of course we know costumes are a big part of a theme park. They help the employee to look like part of the theme, to fit into the role, to actually act out the role a lot of ways. Costumes are huge. So when you work at a theme park, you've really got to look at what your costumes are. And each park handles it a little bit differently, but wardrobe at any theme park, whether it's really themed or not, is going to be important. So for me, costumes are a big deal. It was interesting seeing some of the similarities and differences as well. When I worked at Busch Gardens on Rhino Rally, I was only on part-time, and so I only had a couple sets of outfits, two or three shirts at a time. Busch Gardens for Rhino Rally, we actually had to provide our own pants, black pants, our own shoes, uh, which were black, black socks, and that was pretty much our outfit. One commonality with all of the parks is they were going to give you restrictions on shoes, but you have to buy your own shoes. They all offer a way that you can order shoes through the park, but oftentimes those are a little more expensive than if you buy them outside. And so I bought my own shoes for all of the parks from outside companies, and I got picky with my footwear. Footwear is huge, and I'll get more into that a little bit later. But Bush Gardens did provide us with shirts. I actually managed to keep one of mine. Again, it's part-time. I was only allowed to have a couple shirts, and that's what they would provide us. And then, of course, we had our name tags. Every park gives you name tags. I don't even remember how I ended up keeping my old shirt from Bush Gardens, but uh, there it is. Uh, you can't even get these anymore because Rhino Rally no longer exists. And I had um, a red one, and then at various times I also had yellow and blue. That way you'd have a couple. So if you're working part-time like I did, if you worked one day, then the next day you'd have a fresh one. And you always took your costumes home and you washed them yourselves. They wanted you to keep them looking nice, but Bush especially you took everything home and did all of your laundry. That was really true at all of the parks. Disney, you could turn in your costumes every day and have them launder them and get new costumes. But if you were a regular cast member working attractions or photo pass or merchandise or things like that, it was just easier to take your costumes home and wash them yourselves. Unless it was a fancier costume. Just because the trouble of going through wardrobe, and I'll get into that here in a bit, could have been too much. For Disney, when we got our costumes, as PhotoPass, when I first started way back in 2006, our one wardrobe location where we really had PhotoPass outfits was at a place called Chippendales. Yeah, I know. Great name for costumes, huh? Um, <laughs> it's named after the Chipmunks. It was actually several portable buildings that had been put together, and it was in a part of the Magic Kingdom parking lot over right near the Polynesian Resort. In order to get to it, you actually had to go through a security checkpoint. No person, but you had a little pylon there, and you'd hold up your ID card, let them know you were going into the costuming department. And that's where our costumes were for PhotoPass. Part of that is because our original costume was actually based on the... Uh, captain of the boats if you ever get to ride the boats around walt disney world you'll notice that their shirts and pants they look amazingly like photo pass that's because we basically copied their costume for a long time and added on a couple pieces and so we used their old wardrobe location because we were using the same style of clothes well eventually they expanded that to one of the other parks and i can't remember if it's epcot or hollywood studios had uh, portions of our costume. And then they eventually moved even us from out of Chippendales over to a place called West Clock. And you're going, what is that? Yes, Disney lingo for you. West Clock was actually Magic Kingdom's main wardrobe location outside of the Magic Kingdom. If you go to the cast member parking lot in the very back of Magic Kingdom where the bus stop is, there's a large building there and that is actually the wardrobe department and that's where our costumes got moved to, which actually made it much, much easier to stop by and get them, especially if you're working at Magic Kingdom. Much more convenient than Chippendales, which was really in the middle of nowhere and not close to your job and kind of a pain. I was able to pick up costume pieces occasionally at Epcot and Hollywood Studios, depending upon what I needed. All the parks had belts, and for whatever reason, I tend to go through belts. And so I was able to get new belts for them. And oh yeah, Disney provides just about everything for your costume outside of shoes and socks and underclothes. That's up to you. We were able to pick up all of our costume pieces that way. 
And so we had our belts, we had pouches, and a lot more. Because I was full-time at Disney, I had two vests, and so I was able to keep those. Um, and then I would have uh, four or five shirts. And it's just a basic white shirt. Now, and I'm going to show you more of the costume as well. The reason I have my Disney costume pieces is because I never officially quit or really left the company. When I moved to Missouri, I was actually on seasonal status, and my intention was to be able to go back every few months and work a little bit. And so I was able to keep my costumes for Disney because I was still technically an employee. And I just never managed to make it work out where I could go back down and work again. So that's why I have the costumes. They also, my costumes got aged out of their inventory system. And so it would have been things I would have tossed away anyways or didn't even have recorded in the system anymore. I also had three pairs of shorts, one pair of pants. The one pair of pants was so that way I had a longer pair on days where it was cold. Or if we were working at a dining location, then we would also have to wear pants for that. So I had one pair of pants, and then I had one of the Main Street costumes for Magic Kingdom. With the white knickers, and then the kind of the white and gray striped shirt. So I had one of those outfits. When you go into the wardrobe section, you, they actually have all sorts of racks, and you have to go through and find your size, and make sure that you get the appropriate piece of costume. One of the things that all the costumes have is they all have a scan bar on them for Disney. If you had other old costumes you were turning in, you would take them to a return bin and you would take that little scan bar and you would scan it onto the computer so it would keep track of all your inventory, how many you had, how many you didn't. Because if you had so many pieces of costume checked out, you weren't allowed to check out more than a certain limit. And generally it was five of the pants, five shirts total, two vests for us, one belt. And so you had to make sure you were always turning in your old stuff before you got new. So you would scan that, you would then go over to the racks, find something new to replace what you were turning in. You might have to take a little bit of playing around with sizes a little bit, because the sizes would sometimes run small, but not always. The thing that was frustrating with Disney wardrobe is the sizes were not consistent. And so, especially for things like pants or whatever, you'd pick them up and you'd have to go over to the changing room and you'd have to try them on. And you could get three, pe three pairs of pants that were all the same size, and one would be too big, and one would be too small, and one would be just right. <laughs> so you always make sure you try it on your things. Uh, shirts, I would generally just kind of toss on and just see if they fit me there. And then on your way out, you would stop at what looked like a cashier, and again, scan your ID card, scan the badge, and it would check out your clothing. And that's how you checked everything out. Not only did we have those at Disney, but... We also had our winter gear, so we would have our nice uh, fleece jackets, and these are actually pretty warm, pretty comfortable. And then we all had our rain gear as well. Rain gear was a huge important part of our costume. We all had a belt pouch, so if you ever see a cast member with something like this on the back, you'd wear it generally right there. Well, now you have an idea what this is. This was a very important part of our costume as photographers. Because if you're in Disney, it rains. In Florida, it rains all the time. From May through September, it rains almost every day. You better have your rain gear. And there's the rain gear. Now, for photographers, not only did we have the actual main rain gear, and I particularly, if I could find them, I much preferred the long robes versus the pants and uh, shirt. Because the long robe, you could wrap around a camera better. So I actually still have that. Uh, believe it or not, I still actually use it occasionally. <laughs> but this was also a very important piece of our rain gear. When we turned in our old rain gear, and it, would, it oftentimes would shred, we turned in the old stuff. But the photographers, we would keep our hoods. And that is because when you've got a camera, this manages to fit perfectly over the camera and protect it from rain. So you could have yourself dry and then the camera dry as well. We, most of us, would keep an extra hood in our rain gear. Came in very handy that way. <laughs> it was nice when they finally opened up other wardrobe locations too that we could then pick up accessories, like I said, the belts. Sometimes we could find shirts over at the other parks, especially if another department was using the same kind of shirt, we could then sneak in. Okay, yeah, I know technically it's not a photo pass shirt, but it's the same shirt, and so you could change it in that way. So that made it nice, but West Clock was still really the main photo pass wardrobe location when I left. We didn't use the wardrobe location that was inside the park, because there is actually one that's underneath the Magic Kingdom and the Utilidors. That generally, though, tended to be more costumes for characters and various things like that. You had the character zoo, and then there was another wardrobe 
that was in there as well. And it would have some things like the belts, but it generally did not have our costumes. And so we almost never used that one. The shoes were also interesting at Disney because we had to wear an all white shoe with no brand name on it. I've heard that they've recently switched them over to black, but in our case, it was all white, which honestly I thought worked better with white socks. Now, if you wear black shoes and white socks, it looks kind of weird. And then with the Main Street costume, when we first started to wear that, the white shoes worked perfectly with the white knickers and kind of the white and gray shirt, and it, it made sense. Shoes, though, were huge in where you bought them. I almost always made sure that I bought ones that had very good support and either had gel soles in them or something that would give some sort of comfort to my feet because I was on my feet all the time. And you've got to make sure you've got them comfortable. You wanted a good quality tennis shoe. And what most people would find, especially a new cast member, is they'd want to go cheap. And so they'd go buy the $15 ones, $20 ones at Walmart or Target or something like that. And then they'd find out that three or four months later that these shoes had just fallen apart because of how much you were wearing them. And their feet hurt all the time. You learn quickly that if you're going to buy shoes for work, you're going to want to buy a good pair of shoes. And yeah, it's going to cost you more money. But that $75, $80 that you spend up front on a good quality pair of shoes is going to pay itself off in the long run because you're going to be able to wear those shoes much longer. And it's going to do your feet so much better. So yeah, shoes were the one thing I didn't really skimp on when I worked down there. And same thing true silver dollar city as well shoes were huge shoes at silver dollar city when we were robbing the trains and even as conductors we had to have an all black shoe and what i found worked really well out there was a good quality work boot that had a good sole because we were out running around in the woods and on railroad tracks and climbing over stuff like that so you wanted a shoe that was going to hold up there tennis shoes weren't going to cut it and a regular work shoe for inside kitchens and things oftentimes wasn't real good either my first year, I went through shoes like crazy because I was trying those kinds of shoes. And finally, about halfway through the year, yeah, in four or five months, I went through three pairs of shoes. I finally got myself a good, strong quality work boot that was also comfortable. And that was wonderful. <laughs> All black. And yeah, that was what I had to have out there. Just the chemicals on the from the engines and then on the tracks and just the type of work that we were doing, uh, like I said, crawling up and down hills and things like that. It was just really hard on the shoes, and so if you didn't have a good pair of shoes, they, they were not going to last up there. Our costumes at Silver Dollar City were also interesting. The costume shop at Silver Dollar City, if you know where Brown's Candy Store is, you can actually go backstage there. There's an employee cafeteria. There's the first aid station. The costume shop is also down there as well. It's actually almost underneath the employee cafeteria. You go to the same building and you walk down and then go downhill a little bit and it's down there. Several ladies in there, wonderful ladies. And you can walk in, you can see them all hand sewing the costumes. Most of the dresses and some of the guys' outfits they make down there, they do order in pants and shirts for guys. But you can watch them make the costumes right up in front of you. For there, I had three conductor's outfits, which included black pants that came from the park, the black vest, shirts that would go along with it, my conductor's hat, the black bow tie. So they provided all of that. We had to provide our own belt and then shoes and socks again. And then robber outfits were a little different. They gave me a few things to start off with, including two pairs of brand new bib overalls. And then we actually went to their discard bin where they had a bunch of old work shirts that people had turned in and were no longer using. Um, this is actually one of them. And we would pull out two, three, four of those, and then we would take them and we would robberfy them. And that basically means making them look bad. Now, this one was actually one of my winter shirts, which is why um, it is not torn up and shredded up. So if for colder days, I wanted to have at least one or two shirts that were nice long sleeve and keep me warmer. But generally, we would cut the sleeves off. We kind of shred them up a little bit. We might rip the pocket and we try to make it look worn out. The bib overalls were an interesting issue, though. You can see this is, like I said, one of my very first pairs of bib overalls. And you can see it still looks pretty stinking good which was not what we wanted as a robber. <laughs> we wanted to look old and beat up because we had stolen it. And so with my bib overalls, I actually took them out. I scrubbed them down. I washed them a number of times. I actually threw a little bit of bleach in the wash and tried to fade them that way. I would leave them outside in my backyard in the sun. I actually, at one point, I've got a dirt driveway at my home. 
And I actually threw them down in the driveway when they were wet and took my car and ran over them a whole bunch. Um, let's just say these things are sturdy because it didn't do diddly to them. <laughs> Never did get those looking good. I actually ended up finding another old pair of kind of worn out bib overalls that had the leg partially ripped and that's what I ended up wearing a lot of times and then we finally got some restrictions changed where we could wear jeans and so I would find some old worn out blue jeans and I could wear those and those were much more comfortable than the bibs anyways that's what we wore robbing oh and then we had our old hats my first hat I ripped a big hole in it and after a few months I realized it just looked bad and so I went in I got a new old worn out hat because again as a robber everything was discarded and so nothing was new for us except the bibs which were terrible so we like getting old used things that had stains and nobody else could wear in the park because they didn't look good anymore because they worked perfect for the robbers and so the robbers really were the recyclers of the park if they were going to throw away something because it couldn't be worn anymore we were all like hey let me check it out first and see if it'll fit me and if i could use it it, it worked wonderfully so the ladies actually had a, a box in the wardrobe that was labeled for train robbers so we could go check it out every now and then probably every three four weeks we would stop in and just see what was new in the box and let them know if there was something there we could use. And then at Silver Dollar City, at the end of the season every year, so once December was done, or if you were a regular season at the end of October, you would take all your conductor outfits, and you would take those back to wardrobe and turn them back in again. We did get to keep the robber outfits because they were basically trashed, um, and we just kind of remind them as they were checking things off, hey, your bibs, Robert, oh, that's right, okay. So we got to keep our robber stuff, most of which, the old shirts, most of them I've thrown away, but all the conductor stuff all had to get turned in. And I did actually leave my hat out at the robber shack in case somebody else could use that later. So there's a look at costumes and wardrobes and things at theme parks. If you've got other questions, I would love to hear them. Please don't forget to leave them below. Did I cover all your questions or not? I'd love to know. Don't forget to like and share the video as well. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and God bless. So here's a look at how... So here's a look at the way I got my costumes, what costumes I wore, how many, and all of that at... Disney, you could turn it... And one of the things that all the costumes have... Oh, hey, look. It's one of my name tag pieces. See, I keep all sorts of stuff. <laughs> one of the things that all of the costumes have is they all have a scan bar on them. And let me see if I can find my scan bar. Okay. And I don't... Oh. If you'd like to know about my merchandise, fan pages, and more, be sure to check the description below. If you'd like to know whenever I've got a new video posted, well, make sure you hit that button right up there and subscribe. If you'd like to watch another one of my videos, I've got a great one for you right here. And if you'd like to be like these wonderful people here and support me financially on Patreon, well, make sure you check the link right there. There's even some extra perks for them. Thank you so much and God bless.